our audience, Jim is one of the most philanthropic and involved people that I've ever come across. I mean, the list goes on. Chair of Board of Trustees at Catch. Um, chairman of the Board of Make-A-Wish Foundation of Michigan. Chair of the Board of Children's Leukemia Foundation of Michigan. I mean, it's unbelievable. Um, can you talk a little bit about your experiences giving back and, and what that means to you? Uh, absolutely, because that also is based on an experience. Uh, I was heavy into the acquisition stage, and I had gone, we had won an award for a video that we did. And I went to this luncheon to get this award, and there were a bunch of not-for-profit people there. And I, I met this lady, and I said, who are you with, and what are you doing? And she said, I'm with, with the Make-A-Wish Foundation. I said, well, I got an ad agency. And she said, that's our biggest problem. We need to reach out to donors. We need to raise money. And we don't have any market marketing budget to do it. So we don't have a good annual report. We don't have good collateral. I said, okay, take care of that right now. We'll, we'll do that for you pro bono. Mm -hmm. So I did that pro bono. And then they uh, ultimately put me on the board. Um, and then one day the president of Make-A-Wish came to me with this wish. It was a handwritten wish from a little girl, 17, uh, who had bone cancer and uh, building and tumors throughout her body. She had gone to um, Cedar Point on a bus of pediatric cancer kids from Beaumont. And the bus pulled into this big bus parking lot. All these kids get off the bus, and the healthy kids in the adjacent buses reacted to them like, like they were lepers. They physically got away from them, like they were going to catch this disease. These kids who had no hair or missing limbs. And and she got back on the bus, wouldn't go to Cedar Point. And she was 17 and had been a track star, but now her leg was gone. And uh, wrote out this wish. And the wish was merely, it's not our fault we got cancer. All we want is a is a smile from somebody. So the President Make Wish gave me this Thing. How are we going to grant this? And I thought about it, and I said, okay, we're going to take care of that. We're going to do a PSA, and it's we're going to traffic that around the world, and we're going to do what Alex wanted us to do, and that's tell other people it wasn't their fault that they got cancer. So Alex was heavy into um, chemo and radiation and had ups and downs, and we came up with an idea, and she picked 10 other cancer kids from Beaumont, ranging in age from 2 to 17, all who were really ill. And we were going to get them into a PSA. We got Bette Midler to donate the rights to her song, uh, Wind Beneath My Wings, with her singing, not just the rights, but her doing it. And we created this PSA, and it's called Alex's Wish. And... Uh, we, we took a long time to do it because we wanted Alex to be well enough and strong enough to be part of it. So she and I would be on the phone or I'd run and meet her and, and we'd work on the script together. And ultimately I got back from one day from a squash tournament and my message light was on. And it was her aunt saying, they just told Alex she has 24 hours to live and she wants to see her PSA. And I said, where are you? She's at Beaumont. I said, okay, give me an hour and I'll be there. So I, I got jumped in the car. Unfortunately, I didn't wait for Alex to finish it. Had she been okay, I would have believed that I hadn't. But we went and finished it because I kind of knew this was coming. Took it to Beaumont and uh, went to the nurse's station. I said, here's Alex's PSA. She's waiting for it. Would you take it to her? And she said, no, I want you to bring it to her. So you don't want to go to the floor of a pediatric cancer and that's the last room on the floor, obviously. So I walked to the end of her room, and I looked in, and Alex was just a skeleton. She had an oxygen mask on, and I, I, can't, I can't go in there. Went back to the nurse, and I said, where are her mom and dad? And they're meeting with a doctor. I said, okay, I need to wait for them, and then I'll go down. So they came out, I went down, saw Alex. And I kissed her, and it left a welt on her forehead, because of how sensitive she mm -hmm. was. And I whispered, I think you're going to like it. And she couldn't even push the remote. So I pushed it for her and we played it. And uh, she's crying with tears. She couldn't really cry. Mom's crying, her dad's crying, I'm crying. It was like awful. And I probably waited five minutes. It seemed like five hours. 
I said, you want to see it again? And she said, you know, so we played it again. And I said, it's time for me to go. And I gave her another kiss and she whispered to me, it's perfect. I left and her father walked me to the elevator and he said, now she's going to die. That's what she's waiting for. She called her rabbi. She got the other kids on the floor to come so she could show them her video. And uh, we're in the parking lot. Uh, I got three kids. And I had been more of a football macho kind of guy uh -huh. with my kids. Yeah. You know, tell them you love them. You know, yep. They know it, but you didn't say those things. And your buddies, you're giving them high fives. Smack him on the ass. You're not giving him a hug. Yeah. Not as sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. I got in the parking lot and I called each one of my kids. And I called Jess, who was a squash pro in New York. And I said, I'm not drawing drugs and I'm not drunk. I'm going to say things to you I've never said. And I should have. And I and then I called my daughter. Same thing. Called my other daughter. Same thing. Um, and it was that whole experience that changed the way I acted with people and the way I acted with my friends. I mean, if it wasn't for the stupid virus, I'd have hugged you guys when you walked in here. Mm -hmm. I hugged my clients. And I, I say things to people that I didn't used to say. Yeah. And, it, and it confirmed my priorities, that I wanted to help other people. Um, a book was written about that called When One Door Closes. Her mom and dad and I traveled around the country and gave a three-part talk on the Alex story. You should go on the Make-A-Wish uh, website and look at the video. Um, it's called Alex's Wish. Definitely YouTube, do that. And uh, had a big impact. That's amazing and extremely inspiring. And I can see now why you're so involved in, in the philanthropic work. I think that that's what you were talking about before. That experience and getting to share... Alex's message is something that's way more valuable than an expensive watch or a nice car. Yeah, absolutely. I, that's like when humanity really shows. And I, I think that's it's incredible. Mm -hmm.